Hello, I'm Professor Smalley, and this is a little introduction to kind of get you started into your online class and sort of give you a, a feel for what's going on when you uh, log into D2L, which is our online management system. Uh, there's a couple ways you can get into it. You can kind of go through My Lone Star, uh, where you can see business you have in there if you want to, or should be able to go up here straight to LSC Online. That should work. And come over here, go to Secure Login. And looks like my name and password is already in there. All right, so here we go. Actually, this did just take me to my Lone Star. Well, either way, if you end up on this page, just come over here to LSC Online. Go to D2L Courses. And you probably won't have this much business here on the left that I have. Um, so let me find the Calculus 3 course. And let's see, I might change the role over here to see what it would look like from the student perspective. There is, if you've never used D2L before, there is some sort of little quiz you have to take or something. Um, it's a one-time deal to allow you access to our online thing. So you have to, I think you have to make an 80 or be percent or better or something. So you actually have to pass that quiz to be able to get access to the course. But it's just a one-time thing. So looks like you can click on this content. or I'm going to click on content right up here. And this is where most of your info is uh, located, except for the assessments, which we'll talk about here in a minute. And um, this folder, syllabus, textbook, and other items, that's kind of, well, needless to say, I put those two items there and then like stuff, other things in there that don't fall into these other categories. So right up here at the top, syllabus, so you certainly want to read through that. Um, Let's see. I'm sorry, syllabus is the second item down here. Maybe I should have put that first. Oh, I can't edit in this mode. So I'm not in instructor mode. But anyway, there's your syllabus. And um, so I'll click on that. There we go. I believe you can download. Uh, there might be a way to download these files if you wanted to, but I don't think you necessarily need to. Some of the notes you might want to or something, but yeah, download at the bottom. All right, let's see. So I'll go back. Here's uh, the calendar, which has all your due dates, but the D2L calendar will show a lot of your due dates. Now this is just, I mean, the due dates are important. You need to pay attention to those. Um, this, but the topics, that's just kind of laid out in, in just a kind of an order for you to sort of keep pace or whatever. You don't necessarily have to follow that. There might be some weeks where you're really busy with some other things. And then, uh, um, then, you have let, more available time where you could maybe do two of these weeks in one week or, or whatever. The key is you just don't want to fall behind too far. So you see we got uh, exam one, which I'll talk about in a minute. Here are the quizzes, and you see their due dates. And here's exam two. And due dates, due dates. But like I said, they'll be in the D2L calendar also. So here's a sort of a map of, you know, outline of all the topics. Okay, let's go back. Uh, here's a textbook that I've provided. Of course, you're free to use anything you want. You will not be submitting any specific exercises from this textbook. So any textbook you want to use is fine. You match up the content title to, to whatever it is in, in that particular book. 
Come back over here. I have some practice problems. Those are just suggested problems that go with each section. And you can see that it is roped off by, it's grouped by the um, content for each exam. Now, chapter 15 is the final is cumulative. It's over everything, but chapter 15 is not part of exam three. All right, so you can, um, here's some, these formulas will be provided for you on every exam. And needless to say, you won't need, you know, all of these later ones for every exam, but I'm not going to have the testing center just print, you know, one page or like I, one or two pages like I would do if this was face-to-face -face class. So you'll just get that whole thing during a test and you won't need all of it. And it's pretty much ordered throughout the course pretty well, so. Um, here's a trig sheet book that I provide. You need to know your basic derivatives and things from Calculus 1, but, but the unit circle and trig identities I don't make you know, so I would provide this book, trig sheet, with a unit circle and some other formulas. All right, there's a bunch of other things on here you can look at here. I'll, I'll come back to this quiz thing in a minute. but Now, the um, in here... I have some uh, notes, class notes. You start with there, some videos that come from a friend of mine. I'm going to be adding some of my own videos regarding the exam reviews. And so I have all these notes. So you see they're grouped by exactly. So you know, see their exam one. There they all are right there. Um, here's some old Cal 1, Cal 2, pre Cal notes, stuff that you certainly can help yourself too if you need to refresh yourself on anything. These are her lecture videos. And I also have these notes in uh, Windows Journal format. If you wanted to use a, a tablet with Windows Journal and you want to write on them or something uh, versus paper, you can do that. Or it may cut off or something. If you can't see something, you might be able to see any missing information if you look at the journal file. Alright. This thing keeps popping up. I don't care about that. Now, quizzes. Quizzes aren't necessarily quizzes in the traditional sense where you take it, you know, like you, the questions you don't See, this is more like homework sets. I call them quizzes. Maybe I'll change the name of that eventually. But in this case, a quiz means you actually see the problems in advance. So notice there's exam one here. Exam one is a take-home exam. So you, you, you'll do the same thing for exam one and the quizzes. Exam one, you'll open that up. You'll work the problems, and I'll show you here in a minute where you uh, submit your answers. So you will work all those out, then you just go enter your answers when you're done. So I won't have a, bit, a long time limit on these quizzes, maybe, maybe an hour tops, but remember, all you're going to be doing is entering the answers, not working the problem. You should have already worked these problems out. So we come down here, so, you know, hence it's a quiz, so quiz one, you'll open this up, work these problems. They're multiple choice. Decide what answers you like there and save those. And then when you're ready to submit them, let's go back up here. We go to assessments. Assessments, quizzes. And you can see I've got them all laid out here. So you would... Uh, ready to do quiz one and then also I, don't, I have the quizzes open all the quizzes open now they all have different deadlines the exams 
probably not exam one, but in case I want to make any changes, you know, this week or something like I thought about, I want to make a change. I usually wait till I open these up, but the exam one's take home anyway. I doubt if anyone's going to be ready to start to take exam two this week, so I'm not too worried about that first week. So, so you come in here to quiz one, you click on quiz one, and here are the problems, but let's see. There should be, I must not be in student view anymore because it looks like I'm in instructor view. Let me go back home and see if I can change that because you should have something where it says start a button that says start quiz. And then you, you know, you, you take your sheet where your answers are, then you go through and check your answers and, or, you know, look at them and be careful when you're marking your answers. Uh, every once in a while it might scramble the answers, not that often, or, or scramble the letter choices. So just be real careful, you know. In other words, if you work a problem and the answer is, is supposed to be two, you know, whatever, you know the answer is two. Well, it, 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 if it was letter A was two on the printed file, but letter C instead was two on the actual quiz, you pick answer two obviously so the answer that corresponds to the number two so let's see I don't know how I lost my access to student not yet put it back me in faculty mode here so let me go to assessments And yeah, this is what it looks like for you. Start quiz. So like I said, you have one hour you see as a time limit. Well, I don't think it's going to take you an hour because you've already worked the problems out. You're just entering your answers. But I just allowed extra time so you could make sure you could go slow, you know, and not have to rush through it. So I'll just click on start quiz for a second and show you. Uh, well. Yeah, so you just kind of go through there and pick whatever answer it is. Click on the bubble. And then you go down the very end. Whatever, like there's one. I'm, I'm not saying that's the right answer. I'm just showing you. You can save the answers individually and then submit when you're done. Save all responses and go to submit quiz. I'll go back to quizzes. It might give me a trouble. I thought it might give me some sort of message about submitting the quiz. Anyway, oh, that star might mean something there. That Open quiz probably. But anyway, same thing for exam one. You'll do the same thing for exam one. And like I said, check the deadlines carefully. Now I have a, a file. I'll explain this real quick, but uh, now and then I'll show you. So yeah, this uh, when you want to, you can't see. It'll tell you your results for the quiz. They're all ten problems each, so it'll tell you your score. But you can't view your results until about I believe it's a couple hours after the deadline. I set it for like two a.m. So you know, unfortunately, even if you submit the quiz on you know early February you can't see which ones you missed until about two hours after that deadline right there after the February 19th but um, the, the common mistake is to go back and look at it people will click on the quiz itself please don't show me that message anymore there we go you, you click you don't click on the quiz itself because if the quiz is expired nothing's gonna happen so that's that can be frustrating but what you do is right here and it tells you submissions you'll view your submission. But once again, you can't do that until after a couple hours after the test. I even have a file. That's why it doesn't hurt to go through and look at all these files and see and click. You're not going to hurt anything here. The only thing you have to be careful is when you're submitting a quiz. Don't just randomly do that. But if you go back up here, syllabus, uh, quiz entry, just uh, not sure what that's about here. But I know I have... Um, Reviewing quiz and exam submissions. 
So see, it tells you what I just showed you right there, that you click on the Dropbox and hit Submission. So yeah, go through and just look at these things. You're not going to hurt anything. Roam around, look and see what we've got. So uh, I showed you the quizzes. Oh, you, you probably noticed back in the, uh, let me run back to the assessments in a minute. Uh, the quizzes in exam one, but look at, uh, notice exam two, exam three, and exam, uh, final exam have that little so, uh, gray lock next to it. That means those are password protected. Those are the exams you're going to have to go to a testing center and take the exam and the proctor uh, unlocks the key with the password for the exam and then you can get in there. But see exam one, that was not necessary because it's take home. So there was no point in locking it and giving you a password. Just go in there whenever you're, you're ready to submit all of your answers. And Okay, so those will be the ones you take at the testing center. So we looked at the lecture notes. So just kind of click around, look at all that. And let's see. Let me go back to content. Uh, exam reviews and solutions. Uh, there are no video solutions here at this time, but there will be as we go throughout the course. Uh, but I do have the PDF files already there and post posted. So you can see all those files. And they're always much longer than the exams are going to be. Exams will probably be around 20 questions or maybe tops or whatever and always allow plenty of time to take the exams. So these reviews are always longer. They're just, you know, extra practice. You just kind of doesn't hurt to have, I always like to have more of my reviews and I do the test to make sure everything's kind of covered. So I believe that's, that's about it. Every, that's all the content we have. So you can kind of say, click around and see what, what we have here. And then, um, I think there's anything else I want to, one thing I'll say real quick, I'll go over here and the only thing, the thing you'll need here is the, the grades thing. This is where you'll see, um, that's where all your grades will be kept. Now the quizzes will go on there automatically, um, for the, uh, the in-class exams. I mean, or, or in this case, testing center exams. I'm going to adjust the grading scale a little bit. I believe my syllabus mentioned that. And I'll go back and manually enter in the grades. The quiz grades will um, drop right in there. Uh, don't worry about when it shows dropped quizzes because I uh, I believe there's there's seven quizzes and drop three. So what it's going to do, it's going to sort of tell you your early quizzes are dropped until you get you know more than three grades. But they'll still be here in the grade book. So do not worry about that. So if it shows you know, if you make 100 in the first quiz and it tells you that quiz has dropped, well, that's not really true. But, you know, let's say if you, you, you know, you made, by the time you got to quiz 5, you had made uh, 280s, a, a 90, and 200s. Uh, it will show you, let's see, 280s, and 90, and 200s. Yeah, it'll show you that the, the 280s and the 90 would, would then be dropped at that point. You would have to 100s working for you, but they should still all say in the grade book. And any kind of average this thing calculates, I always verify with my own spreadsheet process, so I don't solely go by whatever this says by any means. So I've kind of got this down to where I know how to set it up in Microsoft Excel, but usually this is pretty good. Um, all right, then I believe that takes care of uh, everything. I don't think there's anything else, so. You, you know, obviously, communication to send me send me email. You can use email from here, or you can use my Lone Star email address, or you can you know, do both. Especially if there's some weird thing where D2L wasn't working, so you could download that syllabus just so you could hang on to my Lone Star email address. So, good luck, and I will be here in cyberspace whenever you need me, or if you want to find me at the Lone Star UP campus. You can do that too. Good luck and hope it all goes well.